Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Lady Jane Grey vs Bloody Mary The fight to become the first Tudor Queen Henry VIII is most famous for his six wives and how he would stop at nothing to secure himself a son and a male heir to pass the Tudor throne onto. However, Edward VI, his son, did not have the long and prosperous reign that Henry had hoped and dreamed of. Edward died at the age of 15, having become rather sick, and despite continuing his father's work and dissolving monasteries and continuing the English Reformation, after Edward's death there was a significant challenge to the throne. What followed after Edward's death was a succession crisis in which the throne then passed to Edward's first cousin once removed, Lady Jane Grey, a young 16-year-old girl who would never have dreamed of becoming queen. However, this was disputed by Henry VIII's eldest daughter and Edward's eldest half-sister, a lady whose reputation would become infamous, Bloody Mary. However, both Lady Jane Grey and Bloody Mary would fight to become the first Tudor Queen, and this would result in the reluctant execution of the teenage Protestant Jane. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. It was clear in early 1553 that King Edward VI was ill, and despite recovering, he continued to relapse into very serious conditions. The issue with the King's death was that once he passed away, the succession would pass to his eldest half-sister Mary, and this would cause chaos. At the time, Edward and his ministers had continued to convert England very strongly to Protestantism, revolutionising the church and the way in which religion was adhered to in the country. However, once Mary came to the throne, all this work that had occurred would be undone, and Mary, being a very strong Catholic, would revert all of the changes, restoring Catholicism back as the main religion, and reintroducing all the Catholic practices that had been banned. Edward also opposed giving the throne to Mary, and even Elizabeth, his youngest half-sister, as he believed they were in fact illegitimate. And because of this, Edward drafted a document titled, My Device for the Succession, and with this he changed the line of succession. With this, Edward named his Protestant cousin Lady Jane, and her male heirs as his successors, meaning that his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, and her subsequent children would become the monarchy, changing the course of English history and the monarchy. It's possible that Edward's advisers helped to manipulate this decision, but this was a decision that was accepted. Edward died on the 6th of July 1553, and three days later, Jane was told that she was now the Queen of England, England's first Tudor Queen, and it was said that she was reluctant to take the throne. She never prepared to become Queen. However, on the 10th of July, she was officially proclaimed the Queen of England and was taken to the Tower of London to wait for her coronation. She was married to a member of the aristocracy called Guilford Dudley, and she continually refused to name him King. Now, there was a significant issue that emerged once Jane was proclaimed Queen. It was almost certain that Henry VIII's eldest daughter Mary would begin a revolt to ensure she was the rightful claimant to the throne. Still, across England, there were many who favoured the old Catholic ways and saw Mary as not just the rightful heir to the throne, but as a lady who would bring back the old religion, and many saw her as a saviour. It was clear that to ensure that Jane had a successful ascent onto the throne, then something needed to be done about Mary. It wasn't debated to have her executed, as frankly, at the time, she hadn't done anything wrong, and by killing her, this could have caused chaos across England with groups of Catholics writhing up. The plan was to lure Mary into London, to somehow capture her, and John Dudley, the first Duke of Northumberland, the father of Lady Jane Grey's husband, had planned to do this. John Dudley is seen in history as a great manipulator and the real power behind Jane's short queenship and rise to the throne. 
However, the plan was to somehow summon Mary to visit her dying brother Edward shortly before he passed. Mary, being smarter, was told that summoning her in this manner could result in her capture. And because of this, she decided to avoid the English capital at all costs. Instead of heading there, she fled to Norfolk, where she owned large lands. She knew that the Regency Council would try to seize her, and because of this, she eventually arrived at Framlingham Castle on the 12th of July, which at the time was a stronghold in Norfolk. Today, it's a beautiful castle, and only really the curtain walls and the tower exists. But during Mary's time, it was a lavish and exquisite fortress fit for a queen. Whilst Jane was waiting in the Tower of London for her coronation, she did encounter a number of issues. First of all, was her inner turmoil coming to terms with the fact she did not want or wish to be queen at all, and second was the fact her husband, Guilford, greatly wished to become king, and repeated attempts were made for him to force the queen's hand in this. It was tradition for the queen or king to wait inside the Tower of London for their coronation, but for Jane this must have been a time of mixed emotions. However, it was clear that Mary I would not go down without a fight, she would not willingly give up her right to become the Queen of England. By the time Mary arrived at Framlingham, she had raised around 1,500 men and an army supporting the Catholic princess. With numbers continually growing, as the days went on, it was said that her forces were boosted by innumerable small companies of the common people. Those commoners who saw her as the rightful Queen, who wanted her on the throne, However, the Duke of Northumberland, John Dudley, was dispatched to go and deal with this army. He had not prepared to fight an army, though. Although he was an experienced general, he could not feasibly defeat Mary's forces. Mary was supported by the East Anglian gentry and nobility, and they even managed to secure the Royal Navy's artillery. This then made John Dudley's attempt to defeat her pointless, and his small force was ordered to retreat. Whilst this was occurring, at some point the Privy Council switched their allegiances and support from the Protestant Lady Jane Grey to the Catholic Mary I, possibly as they feared an overwhelming civil war which would plunge Catholics against Protestants. It's also possible that they did this as they feared Mary's army and the fact she had the support of the population. On the 19th of July 1553, Mary was proclaimed Queen in London, and this ended Lady Jane Grey's reign as the nine-day Queen. Mary rode triumphantly into London on the 3rd of August, and was greatly received by the public, but Jane was left to be imprisoned in the Tower of London. Now following Mary's coronation, it was clear that there was an issue. The issue being that whilst Jane was alive, she served as a possible Protestant threat to Mary's Catholic Queenship. It's considered by historians that Mary I did not want to order the execution of the teenage Lady Jane, however, was convinced to do so following threats of rebellion after she named Philip of Spain, which was incredibly unpopular. The people of England detested Philip and saw Mary's marriage to him as a great threat, and they would be right, as during Elizabeth I's reign, the Spanish Armada would try to conquer the kingdom. But with this, Mary sought to deal with Jane once and for all, despite allegedly telling her that her life was to be spared. Jane was offered chances to convert to the Catholic faith and swear her allegiance to Mary. However, she refused to do so, and her execution was postponed to try to convince her. Ultimately, Lady Jane Grey lost her life on Tower Green next to the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula inside the walls of the Tower of London. She allegedly asked her executioner to dispatch her quickly and along with her husband who was beheaded outside the walls on Tower Hill, the axemen took their heads and lives. Lady Jane Grey was just a teenager when she was executed in a horrific fashion and her story is a rather sad one. She was just a pawn in the games of chess of those noblemen who tried to seize power and influence, such as John Dudley. It's clear that Mary I, despite later gaining the nickname Bloody Mary, was hesitant to order her execution. Jane would go on to become a martyr of the Reformation 
and the Protestant faith, and is seen as a victim of Mary I, one of her first in fact. Mary though, would stand ultimately tall and the biggest thing that helped her seize control and dethrone Jane was the support and military might she possessed, raising an uprising in East Anglia. Her reign, although itself would last for roughly five years, is one that is remembered for heretic burnings, executions and restoring Catholicism to England. If we look at the battle between Lady Jane Grey and Mary I, there was only one winner. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.